What are the best lordosis exercises? What we're going to cover in this tutorial is four criteria that all lordosis exercises need to cover. Now, it may not cover all of them, but it may cover one, two, or three of them. Um, but what we want to be able to do is make sure our lordosis exercises as a collective cover these four criteria. If you want some help correcting your lordosis, click the link below, go through to my How to Correct Lordosis 12 week online program where you've got tutorials, workshops, and workouts to help you get into the right positions, to lengthen the, the right muscles, to activate the right muscles, and help you correct lo your, lord your lordosis. Criteria number one for any lordosis exercise is it needs to challenge the position of your pelvis. So when we talk about lordosis, you've got exaggerated curvature of the lumbar spine and what will come with that as a general rule is an anterior pelvic tilt. So you'll generally be in this sort of position. So what we need to be able to do is challenge that and get your spine to flatten and your pelvis to lift up. So that's, that's the challenge of the position of the spine and the pelvis. And that's what we want the exercises to do. So when we go into positions, like a half kneeling position, what we don't want to be is dumped in this position. What we want to be able to do is come here. And we want the exercise to help us do that. So the exercise needs to challenge this position so we can get into the right position so that when we go into either an exercise or a stretch, we want to challenge that, but also we want to maintain that position. But we don't want it to be so easy that we can just stay in the position. It's like, well, this isn't helping because that's not a challenge to it. That's just going into a position and staying there. So we want to be able to go into a position that challenges that, that proper position of the pelvis. So that is criteria number one, is being able to come in here, not just stay in that position, but flatten the lower back, lift the front of the pelvis and hold that position. So criteria number one is we want it to challenge that lordotic posture of the spine and the pelvis. Criteria number two is we want it to loosen the musculature of the anterior hip. So it's the front of the hip. So we've got the stretch when we're down on one knee. So we would come into here. So I would describe, albeit a stretch, I would describe it as a lordosis stretch or a lordosis exercise that would go into a lordosis program. So we would come into this position. But like I described in the last bit of the criteria, is we need it to challenge. So first of all, we need to come into the right position. So flatten it off and come into this position. Now that you may find relatively easy. So to challenge that position is we come forward but we don't dump out of the position and go back to what we're used to. We come into the right position and then we challenge it by leaning forward at the pelvis and maintaining the position. So we've got the lengthening of the musculature or the, of the, the anterior of the hip and we've got the challenge to it. So we've got that as building up the exercise. Now, what we can also do is add some sort of weight into the equation, which could challenge it. So we could come into this position again. We could have a weight in front of us and we could attack it from the other end. So from the top down rather than the bottom up. So we can go, weight goes around the head, arms come behind the head. Now, when the arms come up, the challenge is what we want to do is that and just again dump our spine and our pelvis forward so what we do is again we maintain the position in here hold and then we go around but as we lift the arms up we maintain this position of the spine and of the pelvis so we come into here and we may well feel the stretch come through there albeit we're doing an exercise where a weight is going around our head so that's criteria number two. So number one, we're challenging the position. And number two, we're trying to lengthen and open the musculature at the front of the hip without losing the position. Criteria number three is lengthen the deep front line. Now the deep front line is a fascial chain of, or it's, it's a fascial chain that includes muscles. So it includes the psoas and it includes the adductors. So one simple exercise is to come into this very wide sort of uh, splits position, but this time what we're going to do is we're going to lunge down and then we're going to rotate 
And the idea is, what we're trying to do, the adductors are getting lengthened here as we lunge down, but then as we rotate, it will start to come up and possibly into the abdomen to try and lengthen that chain of muscles and that fascial chain. So we are, again, we'll come into the position, we'll get the position of the pelvis and the spine, we'll lunge down, and then we'll rotate and challenge that, because we're gonna wanna get pulled all over the place. So we will just kind of come in here, yeah, we won't real, really feel much. But if we get in the position, hold, come down and rotate, we're challenging the position, but we're lengthening all the way through. So we may not be ch uh, challenging the rectus femoris or the TFL as much, but we will be challenging the adductors and the psoas, and in some respects, iliacus as well, which are all involved in the, um, in the lordosis and the anterior pelvic tilt. So we come into this position. So criteria number three is trying to challenge the deep front line, uh, trying to lengthen the deep front line, but also challenge that position that we're trying to hold. So challenge that good position that we're trying to hold. And finally, criteria number four is they wanna activate the muscles of the posterior. So we can come down onto one knee squeeze the glute, squeeze the abdominals, lean forward, add something else in, challenge it, lengthen, but also we can squeeze the glute and we can get that from it as well. So we've got that activation to hold it all in place. Obviously the other one is we, if we just wanna work solely on the activation, we just come down and we work on that activation. So we haven't got as much length going through here, but we have got good activation going through here. And you can potentially challenge the position because we hold, maintain position, the spine come up and squeeze. So it may not be doing as much of the lengthening of the deep front line or the anterior hip, but we are getting good, uh, good activation at the back of the hip. And we are in some respects challenging the position, the good position of the hip and the spine whilst we do it. So we have to think about exercises in this way, is what is correct posture and how do we get there and what's stopping us? Because what's stopping us is inactivity at the hip and the abdominals, uh, the, sh the shortness of what's at the front of the hip. So if we need to lengthen the front of the hip, we need to activate the back of the hip and we need to be able to get into that position and challenge it. But whilst we are challenging it, we need to maintain it. So we need to think about it in that way to be able to get the most from these exercises. So when we're talking about lordosis exercises, again, we cover that cr four criteria. We cover number one, we need to challenge good position. We need to lengthen muscles or tissues at the front of the hip. We need to lengthen the deep front line. And then four, we need to activate muscles of the hip. Now these exercises can include all four, three of them, or two of them. And then we can piece everything together in a workout so we get all four as much as possible. If you've enjoyed this content, hit the like button below. If you've, in, uh, if you've learned something new, hit the thanks button. If you've got a comment or a question, leave it down below. And if you wanna watch more, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon.